Hello everyone, it's Jank O'Clock. You heard me. We are playing Ultimate 100% Jank. Noise versus HB. I'll let you watch the game and figure out what my strategy is, but a little prelude. If you notice, there are two ways in which the runner wins the game. Almost always, by getting 7 agenda points. Very rarely, by milling the corp. Now, as more and more cards are printed, um, milling becomes more and more of a viable strategy, but still not good enough, or is it? If you look at most of the cards printed right now that have to do with mill, they, have one, they share one thing in common usually. Usually, the rate of mill is tied to one click per mill. So if you think of noise mill, for example, or uh, grave digger, or something like uh, imp, imping while making a run of R&D, these all only mill one card per click. This is how the game is kept in balance. If you can mill more than one card per click, you could possibly deck the court way too fast. Uh, and that is an issue for game balance. But now, there are a couple of cards that deck the court faster than that rate. You're looking at the blue cards. You're looking at Fisk Investment Seminar. It decks the court so quickly. They lose 3 cards of R&D per click. That is insane. Why don't you use it in noise for double the mill power? Now, of course, everyone acknowledges that uh, Fisk Investment Seminar is a bad card, and it really is. Giving your opponent more card draw means that they'll see more of the pieces they need to reach the 7 agenda points before you win off of the mill, which is bad. So, if you see my hand, you probably know how I intend to control um, the court from scoring 7 agenda points. But you might ask, where is your bad publicity coming from? You can't play black mill now, and that's true, I can't play it just yet. But hopefully, with this Fist Investment Seminar, you might get a little sense of how I'm uh, intending to go about doing this. Now, my opponent has wisely iced up all th three central servers and has a remote going. So the best thing I can do right now is to toss the clock on the table. This is quite important. This means that um, I'm not going to lose to Biotic Labor. Which is pretty important because fast advance is a big problem. Um, I, do n I want them to have to place agendas in remotes for at least one turn so I can fetch them with black mail when the time comes for it. In the meantime, I'm letting him have all the cards in the world that he wants. It's not going to matter. The two layers of ice isn't going to matter. Trust me on that. He can spend all his resources installing ice. Right now, he should be scoring agendas. He doesn't know exactly what he's up against, but I'm recurring my fist investment seminars with deja vus, which means that his deck is... um getting plowed through at an accelerated rate. He has less than 30 cards left in his deck. We are one third of our way through the game. How quick is that? He hasn't even scored a single agenda. So I'm going to continue milling him and getting the same old thing out. Now, this deck was initially conceived in Laramie Fisk, which made perfect sense. Uh, Criminal seems better because um, not only does Laramie Fisk's ability contribute to, the to mill by forcing the court to draw cards, more importantly, you have Inside Jump and Feint Infection, which means that you can actually make central runs if need be. And more importantly, that means that you can actually play Apocalypse. Apocalypse is very strong because this completely circumvents the need to play Blackmail. There's no point blackmailing, just Apocalypse the entire board away, they can't score the agenda in the remote. And um, yeah, it gets past nasty stuff like Caprice on the remote, Ash on the remote. Those are the things I'm worried about. Here though, my opponent is pretty confident that I cannot get through his uh, double advance remote even without an upgrade, and he's right, I do not have the bad publicity I need. So I'm gonna let him score the agenda, but not before I draw up a couple of cards and continue milling uh, the crap out of him. Now I have the same old thing on the table, I'm gonna use same old thing to trigger Deja Vu to recur Fisk Investment Seminar to my hand. Now, you cannot play Fisk Investment Seminar with same old thing because it's a priority event. It has to be played from your grip, which means I have to use Deja Vu to fetch it with, uh, to fetch the Fisk back. Which is fine. While he scores his food and is forced to discard cards, I'm going to Fisk next turn. Now, it would have been way more ideal if I Fisk last turn, but I didn't have access to the Fisk, unfortunately. That was just awful timing on my part. So right now his R&D has 20 something cards, a decent amount. Um, I'm a bit worried because he's apparently going to score a 3 pointer. 
turns out to be a global food. So that is quite bad for me. I do have a spoilers on the board. Now spoilers is another card that mills more than one card per click. Spoilers has the potential to mill um, at least two cards, potentially three against uh, corps that, tend, that score more agendas. Since this looks like a food coats deck, it seems to me that there's only going to be um, three agenda scored instead of four. So I need to buck up. I need to play quicker. That fan side hits the board. And now you know where I'm going to get my bad publicity from. It's from the fan side. Unfortunately, this means that I need to allow him to score yet another agenda, which is problematic because now he's at three points. If he scores another agenda, he goes up to match point. So I have to deny him at match point, which can be a bit tricky. So this is where my deck starts crumbling apart. It isn't exactly fast enough um, against a corp who is able to find the pieces quickly and begin and realize what's going on, scoring quickly behind that remote without too much protection. Um, I am halfway through his deck, but I still need to speed up a bit more. I have run out of fuel. My fist investment seminars are gone. This deck doesn't need wild side like most traditional noise decks because with recurring fist investment seminars, you are doing two things at once. You are um, performing the same utility as wild side, while at the same time you are accelerating the mill of your opponent's R and D. So as I said, he begins uh, scoring another agenda, or not. He double advances the card, the card, and proceeds to do something else. So this is probably another global food, or it could be an ABT, or it could be a Vitruvius. All of those agendas are pretty bad for me. I'm going to play a Dirty Laundry here to check the remote, and surprise surprise it's a Jackson. I get my Laundry denied. Not a big deal. I'm very rich. This deck doesn't do a lot of running. In fact, I haven't really ran at all. I'm going to continue um, building up my board state. In other words, continue milling his deck. Uh, I'm going to install more viruses here. Sherazard pays off very very well and once you have ESOPs it means that you never ever run out of money because you never really need to rest ice. I mean break ice for that matter. So he scores the second global food going up to 6 agenda points. Not much difference between 5 or 6. Either way he's a match point. Most importantly I have the fan site in my score area now so I can actually start blackmailing his server. I have to be very proactive from now on because any single agenda from this point on wins him the game. So I need to keep that in mind. In the meantime, um, I do finally find more recursion, which means I can actually play my Fist Investment Seminars to speed me up. So after selling the daily cast, I'm going to find my Fist Investment Seminar, draw into another Fist Investment Seminar, and I have nothing better to do here. I can't play the frame job because it's a double, that's a very unwieldy part. Of it, I'll just have to take credit. Not the most optimal use of clicks there. And my opponent attempts to close out the game right here. Uh, it seems like he's going to go for shipment from Mirror Morph, a very under underused card. With that Mirror Morph, he's going to install two cards at once. Making the server all the more powerful. Okay, that's three cards. So now there's an upgrade in the server. Things get really dicey here. Upgrades are a big problem, but we'll see what we can do about it. After frame jobbing, my fan side, I'm going to go straight in for the blackmail. Let's see if I can deny him the win. Now, this, as I said, this is a pure mill deck. I do not intend to win on agenda points, but I need to contest the agenda here to prevent my opponent from winning. So, uh, let's see what the upgrade is. Turns out to be a Caprice, which he should have rest before I approach the end of the server, but well, the intentions are clear, doesn't matter anyway. I'm going, uh, this is going to be win, uh, game win side game for him, if he wins this side game. I do have one more blackmail left, um, in case he wins it, but no, we both spend one, so I successfully get through. So this was pretty clutch, because turns out that card was an ABT that he would have won with next turn. Very, very clutch. And with my last card, I'm going to draw, I believe, because I have nothing better to do. So, that was very important. I got rid of his Caprice Nisei, and I prevented him from winning. But I need to still keep up the remote threat. At this point, I might need to save my same old thing on the table, not for a Fist Seminar, but for a Blackmail. He goes in for a double, remote, uh, double install remote once again, and after playing a Fisk, because it's a priority, I'm forced to play the Blackmail. Uh, this gives me two more clicks left to blackmail again should he have yet another caprice. Let's see if that's the case. Once again, he lets me all the way through to the base of the server. 
and doesn't rest anything this time, so I'm gonna get his ABT alongside the Ash, which is useless because I'm way richer than him at this point because he hasn't got a single campaign of this game, and I'll continue milling him. So as you notice, his card is now his deck is now down to 17 cards. I'm a per two thirds of the way through, doing pretty well considering that he's already used two thirds of his Jacksons. Again, he does the double remote thing. Do I go for it this time? I could. I have the same old thing on the table, I have another same old thing in my hand, but instead I go for the blackmail on archives, having milled quite a few cards throughout the course of the game. Maybe I can find one, two more agendas to win. Do I? Only one. So at this point, with only one click left, I cannot blackmail into his remote, I don't have the resources to, so I'll just install a new same old thing, and hope he doesn't win. But win he does, because he had a third agenda, to score. So what conclusions can you take away from this novel means of attempting to win the game via decking your opponent? Well, for sure it's faster than regular noise mill. I got him down to about 7 or 8 cards left in R&D by the time he won. Give me a couple more turns and I would have secured the game. However, the problem is this investment seminar is just inherently bad. Even though it mills the R&D faster than regular mill, it draws them into their money and agendas, which means that they can score an, at an accelerated rate. Um, secondly, this also means that what tends to happen is that agendas tend to get hoarded in hand, rather than with noise mill, where agendas go straight to the bin, ready for the picking, simply by running archives. When the agendas are clumped in hand, you can't get to them. It is possible to tweak my deck by adding nerf agent and an incubator in there, but realistically, you are going to draw them into their cyberdex virus suites as well, so that will completely nullify your plan. Worse, you draw them into their Jackson Howards, which are, uh, as many people say, the Corp's Lord and Savior, because every single Jackson that is used by the Corp shuffles three cards back to R&D. This prolongs the game for the Corp by one or two turns, possibly enough breathing room for them to win the game. So if you really want a degenerate deck that relies on uh, milling the opponent for victory, go play DLR Val instead. Uh, without the errata to wireless net pavilion, it's way more effective. Trust me on that. This is just too much jank. But of course, with all mill strategies, the upcoming card in Mombat Mom Cycle, the black box, I forgot the actual name, but the one that um, says the corp cannot win for the next three turns uh, except through flatlining, that would be a valuable addition to any deck that's looking to mill. Thanks for watching and happy net running. Goodbye.